how it can be applied to different areas. And I think that's extremely important, right? I think some of us are sort of uh, technology folks and, and we can sort of get in there and sort of grind um, just around the technology pieces associated like with it. Uh, a number of us, you know, might be analytically minded and sort of really sort of talk about convergence and what that means. Um, and at the end of the day, it's really about how we, we can apply this to different industries. Uh, and I think that we have the right people today to really sort of go in and sort of talk about that. So uh, again, my name is Aniti Akadem. Uh, AmplifiedImpact.io is uh, the name of my company. And I really appreciate the fact that all of you are here today. You have so many other places that you can be. And with that, I actually wanted to go ahead and hand it off to Stephen Fraga, who is an amazing gentleman himself. Uh, he runs uh, three just amazing meetups. Uh, and I'm going to let him sort of take it away. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, Anita. Um, so yeah, so I run these meetups and the plan is to try and get them more in action. I've been kind of slacking on them and now I want to try to kind of consolidate them as much as possible for people that have the same interests because they're kind of spread out and then get more events going. And then hopefully after this coronavirus thing, actually meet in person and get some venues and um, more speakers and more pizza and more beer and more drinks. Um, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to just introduce our speaker tonight. So his name is Ryder Meehan, and I'm going to share my screen so I can show you a little bit about his company and his LinkedIn profile. So let me get that going. Give me two seconds. All right. So um, here he is on LinkedIn, and um, if you want, you can find him by just Googling Ryder Meehan LinkedIn, and he'll be the first result. So Ryder uh, is a co-founder <clears throat> and CEO of a company called Upgrow, and it's upgrow.io, and I'll show you that as well, if I can move this out of the way. So here's Upgrow, and just watch out because it's upgrow.io, not .com. <clears throat> They're a full service digital marketing firm, um, so they do all these things. They're really about lead generation for business to business clients. Um, and if you, <clears throat> I know there's a lot of people in the industry here, but if you know anyone that needs something, they offer a free consultation. So you can quickly go over there. And then um, writers are obviously in involved in the business himself. And his background is um, doing a lot of work at uh, kind of big digital marketing companies or as a digital marketer kind of high up in these companies uh, before he started his own company doing that. And he's also has some kind of plain old, old fashioned business experience uh, as a real estate investor. Um, so you can see some of his, of his experience here in his LinkedIn profile, but his clients include TalkDesk, Capital Bank, and um, Blue Angel Vodka, which we should have gotten to sponsor this. Um, and so he's gonna be talking tonight about landing page optimization. I reviewed some of his other talks. I went to him, it was great. I learned a lot. And I think that's all I have to say about that. Um, so let me stop my share so I can pass it to him and I will mute myself and I guess Ryder, take it away. It's yours. All right. Thank you very much for that glowing intro. Um, so let me pop over to the pre -so. so I want to talk tonight about landing pages, uh, let optim uh, conversion rate optimization and what we can do as marketers, you know, not being web developers, not being necessarily UX professionals, what we can do to still build high converting landing pages. And it's very possible. So Steven, thanks for giving the intro. So this presentation is gonna be about 45 minutes of me talking about myself and my background, and then we'll try to get in five or 10 minutes of content, of course, I'm kidding. Uh, just really quickly about me, 15 years of online marketing. I've always been more focused on the lead generation side of things. Um, I was uh, in-house uh, marketing director at Samsung Mobile at Tatcha at Razorfish. I worked with some really cool brands um, like Apple, Microsoft, and others. And uh, then a couple of years ago, I decided that I would start my own agency. So that's how I got to upgrow. And so a question for everyone, what is the single most impactful change you could make to improve your PPC or really any digital marketing program? And uh, hopefully you can probably guess this based on the topic of the discussion, but it would be your landing page. And let's just look at the math on that. 
So a question would be, is it easier to double your traffic or double your conversion rate? You know, going from a two to 4% conversion rate is highly possible. Um, just think I, you know, we've definitely made changes for clients or made changes on pages that can achieve a lot more than that. But then going from 5,000 to 10,000 visitors is either very expensive, you need to double your marketing budget, or you need to, you know, make some massive SEO improvement um, or, or just make some incredible uh, optimization to get from 5,000 to 10,000 visitors. But if you look at the end result, it would be the same in either situation. Math. So what's the secret to a high converting landing page? Uh, the ability to build, test, and optimize the full funnel gives a marketer more control over performance. Um, and you know, I can I really felt this like when I when I was at uh, Samsung or was working on bigger accounts at Razorfish. You know, you would kind of deliver the traffic, and then maybe you have a web developer or web designer building the page, but they don't really have the marketing understanding that we would as marketers. So copy, um, feeling, and then if you want a, a large number of landing pages. You're really at the mercy of a web designer to create all those landing pages for you. So if you have, say, a keyword that's very specific um, and it should drive to content very related to that keyword, uh, unless you can get a designer to build that for you, uh, you're just kind of out of luck. So as a marketer, the ability to create a large number of good looking, uh, high converting landing pages is incredibly powerful. Um, and with modern software, like an unbounce or Instapage, it's very possible. So historically, as digital marketers, we had a lot of control over the lead generation at the top of the funnel. We could drive clicks and possibly even leads, uh, but we didn't have as much control over interest, decision, or action. And if we add landing page uh, capabilities to our skill set, we can go much further in this funnel and make a much bigger impact for our brands, for our clients, and for our, our, our team. So now I've hopefully hyped you up a little bit, got you excited about the importance of conversion rate optimization and landing pages. Let's look at the elements of a high performance landing page. So this is a good formula. Um, something to keep in mind, Visually, when people get to a new site, their eyes go in a Z pattern. So if you look at this screenshot I have for speechsisters.com, which is a really well-designed and laid out and written well, uh, website, you can see they've got the call to action in the top right, the gray button, and then the eyes go back and down to the left and then back and across. So you wanna put your call to actions like in that Z pattern. Um, that's why you wanna get one in the top right corner and then again, uh, either in the middle or in the, the left side of the page. So keep that in mind when you're placing your call to actions. And if you haven't got a call to action, you definitely do want to have a call to action. Call to action is basically a button that is guiding a user for what you want them to do next. In this case, it's uh, find a course. Uh, and then I like to have a softer call to action. So there's a hard call to action, which is, basically like the buy now, and then the softer call to action is like the learn more. Um, so you wanna make it easy for them to buy, but if they're not ready to take the next step uh, right away, then you've got a place for them to get more information. They should immediately understand the business when they get to your landing page. Um, I've got a couple of examples we'll go through in a couple of slides to show you good and bad landing pages. But you really, um, we come across so many clients and just so many websites where you get so in the business. Obviously, you know what your business does, but try to take a step back and think, okay, if I woke up from a coma, uh, if I washed up on a beach and there was a laptop placed in front of me, um, would I understand what the screen, what the business on the screen does? Uh, and if they can't, within five seconds, you, you really need to think about the messaging and the imagery.
You also want to illustrate customer benefits, not company achievements. This is a common mistake I see um, where companies are so proud that, you know, they've been in business for 35 years or they've won these awards and they have these logos. It's good to add um, some, some stuff for credibility and show that you're an established and accomplished business. But the main thing that you want to highlight are the benefits to the customers, because that's really what they're much more interested in than your achievements. Um, so try to think through what are they looking for? What kind of why did they come to you? There, there's a problem that they have that they're looking at a business like yours to solve. So what benefits do you offer them to solve that problem? And then this is uh, super important, the problem solution results paragraph. And I'll show you a, a couple of examples on other sites, but let's take a look at their site right now. So a couple of the things I pointed out, yes, the buttons and the Z pattern, and then you've got a super clear, what do they do? Obviously um, they teach children to talk, it's online courses, language courses for parents. So really clear what they do, the, the visual, the graphic, the, the mother and the child, very clear. It's not like uh, a logo or a building or an abstract uh, pattern or color. Um, and then they go into this paragraph. In the paragraph, you want to be very thoughtful, like, I wrote, I've written one on my website. It probably took me two or three hours to write three sentences because I'm so thoughtful with each word and I, I think it's worth it in the long run. So the paragraph should have, what is the problem? What is the solution that you offer? And what will life be like after you solve their problem? Uh, so in this situation, this brand, uh, you don't have to guess when it comes to helping your child communicate. The problem is, you know, your child can't talk yet. We want to know, uh, we want you to know that what you're doing is working and what to do next. And they, they kind of provide like, hey, we have the solution of what to do next. Here's all the things that will resolve your problem. And then they visualize, help you to visualize it. Like imagine what will it be like when your child's talking? You don't have to feel like, you know, your, your child's not progressing. There's a lot of emotional stress with that. So they did a nice job setting up what's the problem, the kid can't talk, what's the solution, this course, and what's like, why, what is life like afterwards your kid's talking. So let's come back into the present. It's very simple and scannable. You notice on this site uh, and the other sites I'll, I'll show you later, there's not big walls of text um, that they get to that later. You know, if you're looking to do a lot of reading and a lot of research, there's a, a place and a page for that. Maybe it's even further down on this page, but people don't, it's not like they're picking up a book to read. They're, they're scanning. They want to validate that what you offer is going to be the solution for them before they invest in reading every single word on the site. And I think we can all agree that when we get to a website, we don't just start reading from the top all the way to the bottom. So you want to keep it very simple and scannable so people can find the sections of the page that appeal to them. You want to have a clear next step. That's the call to action. You know, what do you do next? I, I'm like, okay, this all looks good to me. What do I do? You find a course. So that's clear on this page. Builds trust immediately. Um, this is where, you know, I don't see it on this page, but on the other examples, we'll see it. Uh, some common ways to build trust are testimonials, um, number of clients served, like we've served a billion clients. Uh, you can definitely trust us or review stars, um, things that can quickly within a second, uh, tell the prospect that you're a legitimate company. They can trust you. You've done this before. Um, all of that you want to convey with logos or, or stars or testimonials. Think benefits, not features. What is the benefit to the user? Not what is the feature that your brand uh, uh, does. So for example, 
you know, benefit could be uh, we have 400 horsepower engine. The the feature, uh, the benefit to that would be like, you know, you can the car goes really fast. It goes from zero to 60. So try to think more benefits. It's easier for you, a user to visualize like why they would want your product for the benefit over the feature. Um, fast, simple steps. A lot of sites have, you know, step one, step two, step three. Um, this site does as well, and we'll also see that on the other sites to look at. And so here's some ways to supercharge your landing page. Uh, Unbounce is the landing page designer that we really like. I highly recommend it. It makes it super simple to build these landing pages and you can start with a template. And they have a template for almost every industry and category. So it's quick, easy, drag and drop editor. Um, it also integrates with CRMs. Your, uh, so if you're using HubSpot or Salesforce, any lead that comes in through the page can go straight into your sales um, platform. You've got ongoing testing of offers, design, and messaging. So when you build on a landing page builder, you don't have to have the developer build two versions of the page and then try to figure out how to split test them. Uh, you can do it very easily with a platform like Unbounce and then just distribute the traffic 50-50 you know, and see which one performs better. And you can test everything from images, offers, uh, uh, text, all of that can be tested. Create a landing page for each major keyword audience group. So this is really the key. Um, I see so many advertisers, they drive everything to the same page or they just take everything to the home page. So let's say our, our agency, for example, we offer SEO services and then we offer Google ad services. So I can't communicate all of that on, this, on one page concisely. Um, so I'd rather create, you know, two versions of the landing page, one about SEO and one about Google ads. And more specifically, maybe I do SEO for the B2B tech industry. I've got a landing page for that too. Um, so from a user's perspective, they're like, oh, this agency does exactly what I need. Um, I don't have to read uh, down, you know, I don't have to scroll three times to see the section where they talk about B2B tech marketing with SEO. It's right at the top, the whole page is dedicated to it. So creating these different versions that are highly relevant to the keyword, if it's Google Ads, or the audience, if you're driving them in from LinkedIn or Facebook, is super important. And that will also help with your quality score. So Google Ads, uh, quality score is important. It'll dictate what you pay cost per click. Um, so when you build a landing page, it's fully dedicated to the, the uh, keyword, you've got a much higher quality score. Use dynamic content to match search keywords exactly. So a platform like Unbounce has a feature called dynamic content. Um, basically, whatever keyword the user used, uh, that will be like the headline or that, will, that keyword will be injected into the landing page, uh, which further improves your quality score, makes the page more um, uh, relevant. Upsell on the thank you page. I see so many um, marketers, you Say you sign up for an ebook, you sign up for the ebook, you've given your email address, you get a landing page. It just says, thanks for signing up, here's your ebook, or thanks for signing up, we'll email you your ebook. They are, they have momentum, right? At that point, uh, they've given you their email address, they're raising their hand, like I'm interested in you. Why would you hit them with a brick wall that just is a thank you page? So I've got some screenshots of a funnel that we use for our agency. The, the first step is, hey, get this, get access to this video uh, case study. We'll show you how we help the client to increase leads by 775% in three months. And so as soon as you fill out the form, yes, of course, you get the video and it auto plays, but it says, hey, this is step one. You get the video. Uh, let's go ahead and give you step two, which is to schedule your call. So you don't waste any time. You keep their momentum going. Um, otherwise, they leave and maybe you retarget them and uh, maybe you can eventually get them back on the site, but why not just do it straight away? So let's look at some examples. So these are some bad landing pages, a B2C B2 example. Hate to call people out, um, but 
but this is, you know, it just looks like it was made in a long time ago in the 90s maybe. Um, everything is about price too. You've got the, the, the scent sign literally in the logo. Um, the mobile version of this page is even worse. And it doesn't like have a brand identity. You're just shopping kind of the lowest price. Um, it's not even really clear what, uh, what services they offer or why I should choose them over their competitors. Um, and then the design just doesn't add a lot of trust. I guess they, they have the B2B uh, accreditation, which is helpful, I guess, but just kind of a ugly, poorly designed page. Let's come back here. B2B example, funny enough, this is actually um, a relative of mine's company and I've been begging him to invest in a new website. But so basically, when you get to the page, it's like, what do they do? You can't really tell what kind of company they are. Um, and based on their logo, it's like, okay, are they a real estate or a development firm? But they, it's actually a pretty cool company. They build these blocks out of dirt, so you can turn dirt into buildings. Um, and then there's no call to action. So if I want to engage with them, I'm really confused about how, what, what the next step is. I probably have to, you know, go to three or four pages to find like a phone number or a, a form to, to fill out. Um, if there's other compressed or competitors, I don't see like how they're different. Um, and this is a super legitimate company. Like they've been featured on TV shows. Um, they're doing millions of dollars in revenue despite their website. So it's not like they're a tiny startup. Let's come back here. This nonprofit example. So you might think like, okay, yeah, I clicked on the donate button, then I come to this landing page but actually their Google ads program, I Googled uh, donate uh, Africa, which is funny because they don't even have anything to do with Africa. Um, so they probably need also help with their Google ads uh, keyword list. But this is the landing page that it pointed to. Uh, so it, to me, I feel like, whoa, that's kind of aggressive. Uh, I just learned about you and you already want me to donate. Um, so they've got like, you know, it's easy to donate. And if I had Googled like donate to Starlight, sure, this would be an appropriate landing page. Um, but based on the keyword that I was looking for, I need a lot more education. Um, also the graphic, uh, ideally if they built a landing page for like an Africa program, they'd have maybe a picture of Africa or a person that's African. Uh, and then kind of the, the benefits of why, why it's important that you donate to them to support Africa. Um, but in this case, I'd be super confused and I would bounce immediately, which is probably what a lot of their people are doing. So now that you've thrown up on those pages, let's look at some good pages. This is a page we recently built for a credit card client called Open Sky. And just for context, this landing page is used uh, basically, somebody goes to Credit Karma and they're shopping for credit cards. And if you have a poor credit score, then it will sit, then Credit Karma will say, hey, you don't have a good credit score. You can't get one of our credit cards. But why don't you check out um, one of these other secured credit cards? And a secured card is just to explain it is basically pre funded. Um, so you're not really getting credit. It's, it's kind of more like a, um, a, a pre funded debit card. Um, but you're building credit as you use it. So with that context, the person is probably feeling kind of rejected. Uh, they just got told that they have poor credit um, and they need to go get this other kind of less ideal card. Uh, so the messaging is very intentional, like, hey, it's okay. You, we know you just got rejected, but you're about to get approved. So then that hopefully will make you feel better. Um, it's very clear what it is, right? You got a picture of a credit card. We've got the hard and the soft offer. We've got the Z pattern, so the apply now. 
And then the soft offer, because most people are probably familiar with what a secured card is, we built this nice one minute video that'll explain what it is uh, that you can watch and, and figure it out. Then we've got the paragraph that's the problem, the solution, and the release. The three fast, simple steps. Everyone loves three fast, simple steps. Again, another call to action. The video again. And then more credibility with the, with the review stars, the 23,000 Facebook fans. Um, and what you'll notice is there's some things that we don't have, right? So there's no header navigation. That's really important. Um, header navigations can lead people on wild goose chases when they're reading your blog, um, they're just navigating all throughout the site, they're reading your about us page, and they forget to ever apply. So when you give them kind of a, a tunnel vision, so it's like, hey, apply now, watch the one minute video, that should be enough uh, to get you started. So we find that typically stripping away uh, header navigation on a landing page is more effective. And yeah, this, this is a unbalanced page. Another good example, Bright Machines. This is a B2B example. Bright Machines builds these machines that can basically kind of replace a assembly line. So if you're building electronics and you're soldering together laptops or audio equipment, uh, you, you might invest in a Bright Machines uh, uh, product. So basically, this landing page uh, is what we built. You've got a super clear uh, headline. What do they do? They automate electronic manufacturing. And this is actually dynamic text. So if the person Googles for um, audio electronic manufacturing, this headline will change and it will say automate audio electronics manufacturing or automate laptop electronics manufacturing. So this is dynamic. It makes it feel super relevant. And then the user's like, oh, damn, I was looking for audio electronic manufacturing. This is exactly what I wanted. I'm going to get the product sheet right now. Same thing. I mean, if you look at the unbalanced landing pages, you're like, man, these guys, uh, are they, they consistently use the exact same uh, formulas. That's because it works. It works really well. Um, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Also, people's minds are very familiar with the way a website should look. Um, we've had clients that want to say, put the navigation on the left side of the uh, screen instead of along the top, um, or do some kind of crazy innovative uh, type design. And typically it doesn't work as well, just because people don't want to spend time trying to figure out your, your abstract design. Um, then we've got the paragraph, the problem solution result. Uh, quickly summarize. This is important when you have a more complex product, you need to give a bit more information. So all the things that the product can do, credibility builders like case studies are nice. Just kind of explain quickly the three kind of quick steps, how it works. And then again, uh, the form. And what you'll notice is if I filled out this form, yeah, I get the product sheet, but then it says, thanks for filling out the form. Here's your product sheet why don't you go ahead and book a sales meeting right now? Uh, so that follows our same formula. And finally, TechSoup. Not, not a client of Upgrow, but I did like their landing page. Um, so really nice if, if you're, uh, TechSoup does tech support for nonprofits. Um, and you can figure that out within five seconds, I think. Um, so the, the title makes that really clear. You've got the free assessment uh, call to action and then really clear what they do, really concise. So nice work, TechSoup. So what's really simple with Unbounce is you can test any and everything. Very simple. You can test headline, the copy, the order of the elements, the design, uh, what the offer is, whether it's like a webinar or an ebook. You can try different images, different videos. 
this is just one example of two different landing pages we had. In one, uh, we tried to focus them on signing up for the trial of TeamPay. On another one, we added the video uh, to see if uh, that would be helpful. And so that's just two versions to see which would work better. Um, other things you can consider, live chat uh, is, you know, we've added to added it to the Epgrow site. It doesn't get a whole lot of use. We might get one chat a week, um, but other clients we've added live chat to, it has a huge impact. Calendar booking tool, this is key. Like I highly recommend this. Um, if you go to the Upgrow site, you'll notice that we have this calendar booking tool. So instead of filling out a contact form, um, kind of giving me your name, email, and then I email or call you later to try to schedule an appointment, let's just get it all done at once. Uh, it's integrated with my Google Calendar, so it's gonna only show you times that I'm available. And I found that the show rate, when somebody books through the calendar booking tool, is about twice as high because they've selected the time, uh, and this is all integrated with HubSpot, so they get a text reminder an hour before our meeting. It says like, hey, you've got the, the meeting coming up, don't forget. Um, yeah, a link to the, yeah, so if you go to upgrow.io, uh, you can find our contact us page, but this is just the calendar booking tool from HubSpot. So if you're using HubSpot, you can get this. I think they even have a free version. It might have a HubSpot branding on it, but you can get it, you know, Calendly also makes a, a, a free one. It's all well the paid one, it's like 10 bucks a month. So the calendar booking tools are really nice. They improve your show rate and they make it simple for you and the prospect. Quizzes can be effective. Uh, this is one that Bright Edge did. It's an SEO software. Um, people like quizzes. Uh, they get engaged with it. Um, so a lot of them will be like, you enter, they ask you 10 questions, but then if you wanna actually see the results, you have to give up your email address. Usually if people are that uh, committed already, then they'll give it up. Slide-ins, I prefer slide-ins over the pop-ups. Um, so you might've seen this. We had this on the Upgrow site, if you wanna see an example. Our client Twistlock also has it. So instead of blocking the page and preventing you from navigating, it just slides up in the corner. And this is, um, this should be relevant to the page. So say they're on the Upgrow SEO page, ideally they'd get a, uh, an offer for like, hey, here's our SEO guide. Um, so the, the pop-up can be relevant to the content that they're viewing. Now the one, the one, uh, uh, caveat to the pop-up that I do like, and we actually have it on our site and a lot of our client sites, is the accent intent pop-up. Um, basically, if you're moving your mouse to back out of the browser or close the browser, then you get the pop-up. So it's sort of like a desperation, uh, hey, you're leaving anyway, so why not hit you with a pop-up? And you'd be surprised, uh, probably like 4% of people will uh, enter their email address in the exit pop-up. Yeah, Calendly is also a good um, calendar booking tool. Case study. Uh, so basically, uh, this is a B2B tech client that we had. Um, we moved them from just driving to their standard websites from their homepage to their service pages and started pointing all of their traffic to the landing pages that we were building on Unbounce before they had a 4% conversion rate. And then you can see on this trend line, like almost immediately within two weeks, they had a 300% improvement in conversion rates that went from 4% to 12% uh, without any additional cost other than the design of the landing pages. So it works. Now you wanna of course set up tracking and uh, analytics. Um, I always recommend setting everything up, everything up through Google Tag Manager. Yeah, the, the B2B tech client, it was uh, Team Pay. Uh, I had the, the graphic in a couple of slides earlier, but yeah, this is, that was uh, Team Pay. So we built these landing pages. 
And we started using these and testing them against their homepage and their other uh, service pages. That's where we saw the big game. Uh, so Google Tag Manager is basically kind of like a container where they can host all of your pixels and tracking. Google Tag Manager, um, think of it as kind of like a, por a portal into your website. Uh, and so you can place all of your pixels and tags into Tag Manager without risking to break your website and also without bugging your developer. So once your developer or, or you, if you're fairly tech savvy, installs Tag Manager, very simple for you to add pixels or tracking or tag things. And also it's free. Google Tag Manager, completely free. Um, I've got a YouTube video and sh and, uh, showing how to install Tag Manager, um, as well as put Google Analytics in it uh, that I could share, but it's on YouTube. Uh, install Google Analytics. Hopefully, most of us probably have Google Analytics already, but I think it would be nice to if you want to add it through Tag Manager. And then you want to add your ad pixel, ad platform pixels, if you're running Facebook ads, your Facebook pixel, LinkedIn ad, your LinkedIn pixel, Google Ads pixel, and so on. It can all be placed in Tag Manager. Supermetrics is a third-party um, data integration provider. And the reason that you need them is when you're using Google Data Studio, um, you can integrate Data Studio. It's sort of like a dashboard for everything. So you don't have to go log into LinkedIn and log into Google Analytics and log into HubSpot and log into Salesforce, log into Google Ads, export everything, do some Excel wizardry, and then make a report when you have four hours uh, to do that. Instead, Data Studio, it automates everything. All of your data and reporting is in real time. But to access some of those integrations, you need a platform like Supermetrics. So Supermetrics can pull data from LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, um, HubSpot, et cetera, and put it all into Data Studio. So that's your stack. Some bonus tips. So a couple of ideas. Um, this can be really effective pre-warming the, the traffic. Um, I think a couple of years ago, I was seeing a lot of these ads from American Giant, um, the greatest hoodie ever. And what their ad would point to would not be uh, the American Giant website. Instead, they take you to this Slate article, which was probably paid PR, um, but it looks organic. Uh, and basically you'd be like, oh, like Slate says this hoodie's awesome. That's more credible than American Giant saying their own hoodie's awesome. So you basically pre-warm them by taking them to presumably an unbiased uh, PR site that then leads to your brand site. So within this article, I'm sure it links to the American Giant site. Um, so that would be one idea to pre-warm your audience. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll find that YouTube video and send it out afterwards for sure. Uh, why it works, uh, users are warmed, they're build trust, if, especially if they know Slate. Um, a third party saying that you're awesome is way more impactful than you saying that you're awesome. So how it would work, you know, maybe email Slate, say, hey, uh, would you mind reviewing our hoodie? add a prominent and track the link from their positive article to your landing page because you know you want to uh, be able to track and see is it worth the additional cost um, of driving there or would we be better to just point to our own page and then you can figure that out. But we did a test uh, for a client and found that pre-warming the traffic led to a 40% higher conversion rate is actually a, a beauty product. Um, it was a skincare product, and it was driving to a beauty blogger. Uh, she had done a review on it, and people trusted her. Um, so that had a very positive impact. Another idea is using heat maps. Um, heat maps, you can use uh, Hotjar. Hotjar.com is also free um, up to a certain level. I think 10,000 page views a month 
uh, it's free. So unless you have a really big site, um, it is free. It has a couple of cool features. You get a screen like this on your site. So you can see where people are clicking with the heat map. And then it also does screen recordings. So you can see a person's uh, mouse moving around on the screen of your website. And usually you can figure out like where they're feeling lost or where they're getting confused. Um, cool. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to leave a link here to some free resources we have on our site, upgrow.io slash free. You can grab this Google Data Studio template that we have. You just need to copy the, the template, uh, connect your data, so you'll integrate it with your Google Analytics and other sources, and then you get a nice uh, dashboard like this to view your, your website data. Thank you so much. Um, glad to take some questions if we want to go that way. Absolutely. I think that's great. Uh, go ahead question. and just unmute yourselves and uh, ask, your, ask your questions. Um, I have a question about the, un, uh, was it the unbounce one? Um, how do they, how does it work with the dynamic keyword stuff? Like, how do they find out what Google, what the search was on Google and then convey that to your web page, to the uh, unbounce page? Yeah, that's a good question. So you have to like pre-tag the landing pages uh, by keyword or by ad group. So if it was like, up, it would be like, you know, you know, website.com question mark keyword equals audio equipment. Um, so you have to do it, do it a little, you have to do it in advance. Um, it won't just dynamically pull it from the search. But if you're like, hey, this keyword audio equipment, it's going to go to this landing page. So the landing page is website.com question mark keyword equals audio equipment. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So Google does convey that when that's in the URL or something, when somebody clicks on a search link from Google. Yeah, un I mean, unbound. Yeah, unbounce will convey it when you set the target uh, URL as the landing page with a question mark keyword equals whatever you want it to insert. Okay. And that's, that's at your ad group level or your ad level, right? You could do it at the ad level or the keyword level if you wanted to get crazy. And then on the unbound side, it dynamically changes the text within that landing page to match yeah. the keywords? Okay. Yeah. So your ad group can yeah. have a, like a type of landing page, right? Because you're going to group all of, of those relevant keywords together. And then um, you can have one landing page key, and then up, uh, what's it called, unbounce? We'll just sort of take that keyword and then modify that particular piece of text. Can you do it in multiple places on the landing page? Yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah, you just kind of set, um, when you're designing the page, you kind of insert like, hey, this is dynamic content. Um, and you can insert it as in as many places as you'd like put it in the title, put it in uh, the body of the copy on the page. Um, yeah, so it's a, a really cool feature. Hey, I have a question. This is Suyash. Um, I'm, I'm building an online course and I'm not sure what is a, like I'm best way to go about it because I, uh, is what's the difference between landing page and a sales page? Because what I'm thinking is like have a page where people can buy the course uh, or buy coaching uh, or ebook. So the, and the difference between like, you know, like should I, should I have a page where people just uh, put their email and get something free and uh, later sell them or just bring them to a page where they can buy the thing? What's the difference? Uh, in, yeah. Yeah. Um, Good question. So the question, I guess to like kind of clarify, um, when you're trying to figure out, should I just drive to a page on my site um, that's relevant or should I drive to like a specifically designed uh, landing page 
for example, um, with no header navigation, that'd be like, you know, should, he, should you build a page like this that's still incorporated in part of the website versus a page like this that has no header navigation and there's only really one thing that you can do on the page? Um, I would say the price point is also a determining factor. If it's like a thousand uh, dollar course, um, I, most people are going to convert on that first visit. Uh, so you want to really focus on getting them into your lead nurture program so you can educate them and build the trust and then convert them. If it's like a, a $20 course, um, this would be uh, more of a hurdle. Uh, I would take them straight to a buy page. Um, it could still be a page like this, but you'd have e-commerce integrated. Uh, so it just sort of depends on how complex the product is, um, how what's the price point of it, how qualified is the audience. Um, I would say still nine times out of 10, if I'm doing paid media, it makes sense to use a dedicated landing page like this, just to really focus the user um, and get them to convert versus uh, getting overwhelmed and exploring the site uh, so much. Okay, thank you. I'm curious about Unbounce um, as a platform. Is, is that kind of your preferred um, app, I guess, to build these? Or are there others out there um, that are worth mentioning? Is there a reason why you use this Unbounce versus others, for example? Yeah, so we've used many of them. Uh, often clients come to us and they're already on uh, another one. Uh, so in that case, we We'll either try to convince them to move to Unbounce. Just, I mean, a part of it is like a comfort level. Like we know how to use Unbounce. We have uh, built a lot of pages on it. We know how to integrate everything. So it's sort of like, you know, is, is WordPress necessarily better than Squarespace? Um, maybe, maybe not, but there's just sort of like a, a expertise level. So I think that's part of it. Um, but also, just personal preference, I think Unbounce has better features. The price point is, uh, is not too bad. It's like 100 bucks a month. Um, and then it, it, it does a lot of cool things. Um, I would say there's not a huge amount. You know, Instapage is a, is a big one. Uh, ClickFunnels is a pretty big one. Um, VWO is a big one. Uh, so it may just be sort of like, how you're planning to use it, what industry you're in, maybe more specific to different industries, but uh, personal preference, I like Unbounce. I have a question. Um, like, let's say you're starting a new website, um, and I know some people are here. Uh, like, at what level do you decide, like, this is too complex for WordPress or Squarespace? How do you decide there's, like, Ultimately, it seems like HTML and CSS, you know, and add your own features and all that is the ultimate um, in complexity and, you know, flexibility. But how do you decide where you're like, okay, let's just go with WordPress Divi, then or WordPress on the theme, and, or Squarespace, or Wix, or how do you know which one to use? Yeah, um, I mean, all can be good, all can be bad. Um, it really depends, uh, you know, what, what, your, what your goals are. Personally, I usually, I've been only using Webflow for new sites that we build. Um, I find that it's very flexible. It's, it's uh, dynamic. It has a lot of cool features. You have a lot of control over the design. So I try to guide people now to Webflow if they're building a whole new website. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say like, you know, everybody should always move to Webflow. Um, and I, I think it's also like as a web designer or somebody that's designing websites, what's the platform that you're comfortable with uh, that you know how to use? Cool, thanks. Hi, I have a question. Um, uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation. It was very, very interesting. I really appreciate it. And my question is when you build a landing page for a kind of a complex website where you have to you struggle between not keeping the page as simple as possible and providing all the information the the visitor the customer need in order to make a decision uh, 
based on your experience, it's better to have a kind of a expandable area or to put the details at the bottom so they have to scroll or to give them a, another page with all the details? What's your recommendation? Yeah, good question. Um, I think like, go back to this example, this Bright Machines device, very complex. Um, it's like a hundred thousand, you know, multiple hundred thousand of dollars to purchase one of these. So you're not going to buy this thing on one Google ads click. Um, so starting them with a ebook or a webinar or um, a product download sheet is probably the right idea. Um, and then just enough information that they can scan it because you also don't want them getting like overwhelmed or they're like, okay, this thing does pick in place, but I don't, if this was all in a big block of text, they'd say, okay, the device is pick in place, but I don't see dispensing. I need dispensing. Uh, so I'm not willing to read 18 paragraphs down to, to get to the dispensing point. So I'm just going to bounce. So if you can, even if it's a complex pro, uh, uh, product, if you can summarize it, highlight it, make it very scannable. So somebody within a few minutes, you get a good idea of what you do, what are your benefits, um, and then get in touch. Because if it's also a complex project product, um, they're going to be willing to take the call, uh, invest some time researching it. And so the sooner you can get them in touch with a salesperson, the, the, the better you'll be. Thank you. Sure. Well, I have a follow up on that. Um, I work in client services and we get a lot of pushback on page length and the, the continued arguments around do people scroll, you know, is this page too long, et cetera. Do you have any um, data or insights around that? I think my opinion is if it's, what I don't like is cramming it like, oh, we've got a lot of stuff. We need to give it all to them. We're going to cram it all uh, just so they don't have to scroll. I think that's a bad idea. Um, if we have a lot of information and we feel like it's all valuable and useful, a long scroll page, I'd much rather have that as the solution to get it all out there. I mean, so this page, you can see there's a lot of spacing. Um, this could probably even I wouldn't mind this being a longer page. Um, but yeah, my, my opinion is a long scroll page is usually a, not a bad idea if all of the information is valuable. And I think it's also worth looking at like your UX. This is where a heat map can be really useful because it'll show you how far people scroll. Um, and maybe people never scroll down. You can see that with the analytics and the heat map tool or maybe they all get to like the fourth scroll and then they're like, oh, that's what I was looking for and everybody converts after the fourth scroll. Then you can say, oh, maybe we should move that fourth scroll thing back to the top of the page because that's what everybody's looking for. Um, so it's really specific. Uh, there's no like perfect solution, um, but just kind of generally speaking, I think a long scroll page isn't, isn't a bad idea. I'm seeing them more often uh, yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. How does this look on um, on uh, mobile? How does how does this page look on mobile? Yes. Um, you know the the what's four scrolls on mobile? You know might be on the top uh, on a computer. Yeah. So th I mean this is this page on mobile. This isn't a super long page anyway. Um, I'm, seeing also, sites, I'm seeing a lot of sites lately where it is a long scroll page, but the top navigation uh, takes you to uh, sections of that long scroll page. And then if you need, if you need uh, to have more information, then you can either have that at, you could either have that as as another entry in the top navigation or you could have it as a as a um, hyperlink uh, in one of those sections lower sections to go to a new page like you know i don't know 
if you're if you're doing a breakout of, of features of um, of a, a SaaS platform, which is what I do, um, then it, it could go there uh, to give more detail. I, I really I really kind of like that a lot it, because it 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 does give you that. See if somebody does want to scroll down on, on a single long page and and uh, grab as much information as quickly as possible, then you're enabling that. Yeah, the the in page anchor links, um, I'm seeing that a lot more too, as you mentioned, where you can kind of jump down to the section that you're interested in. So that's also a good design solution. Yeah, right. could, could you talk a little bit about A/B testing? Because you know, a lot of times there are these different ideas that sort of are sort of brought forward. Do you want a longer page, a shorter page? You know, can, can just talk about a little bit of the AP testing work that, that you guys do to sort of prove once and for all, hey, for this clientele or this particular sort of product, you know, this is what we're sort of seeing sort of in real time. Yeah, we've definitely tested, you know, should we add this section in? Is it just a distraction? Um, should we use a ton of information? Um, and then we'll also try, probably the most common test is, uh, should, can we just take people to book a sales meeting or a free trial? Or do, they, do we really need to educate them first with an ebook? Um, that's a really common test that we, that we do. But yeah, I mean, with Unbounce, uh, it's very simple to create these tests, um, create two versions of the page and then split the test. You could even do three or four versions if you have enough traffic to, to create a valid test. Um, so yeah. And then how long does a, should a test run to sort of give you good results? Yeah, yeah it really depends on the, the traffic and making sure you have significant data. Um, I mean, if, you're, if your page gets 10,000 hits a day, you can figure out the test results like pretty quickly, um, where if you get you know, 10 clicks a day, then it might take months. And that's great. That just helps us sort of set client expectations <laughs> or our own expectations or expectations <laughs> of sort of senior yeah. management, right? Because everyone wants this data right now, right now, right now. Um, but uh, if there's not a basis for it, then you, you kind of know sort of an industry sort of standard. So I, I do appreciate that. For sure. So does, does Google recognize a page? I mean, you, you want it to be simple and scannable and, you know, and clear, but, um, but, uh, I, is there a certain like number of words you need to get on a page um, in order for it to be recognized as a, a, a page? Um, yeah, I've heard I've heard, heard three hundred. Um, you know, some people say, "Oh no, it's got to be a thousand. You know, how how do you have all the like you know the the simplicity and help people like make a decision and click through to the next action, whatever that is? You know, in um, without giving them a wall of text. If, you know, if you're looking at, you know, I don't know, 500, 800 words, it's, that's an awful lot for a landing page. Are you talking more like uh, SEO Google or, or Google ads? Uh, SEO. Yeah. So with, with SEO, you'd want, this wouldn't work for SEO very well um, because it is so key. It is so lean in terms of, how, how much uh, content there is. This page probably wouldn't work well. So we'd create like a, if they wanted to rank organically for electronic manufacturing in this example, we create a different page for that that would have a lot more content. And then we so use point sort of them to this page? You know what? Yeah, we would only take uh, digital ads to this page. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I have a question. One more question. Uh, a question around uh, pricing. So I'm new to this and I'm building my course, but I don't know how much to price. I've seen all kind of pricing from $50 to like $200, $400 for something what people are doing in my area. And how, what, I don't know what number to put, like, honestly, any advice on how to find the price, how to go about putting, picking the right price that people will pay. I know a little bit about this. If this is uh, related to a course, is that the one? Yeah. Yep. What's yep. the topic of the course? 
it's a design course. It's a designing for uh, augmented reality and virtual reality, 3D design. So it depends on a couple different factors, you know, obviously how long the course is, how strong the demand is, um, you know, and how strong the competition is on Udemy, Udacity, LinkedIn Learning, and free stuff on YouTube. Um, so typically, like, I don't know, I know more about the live courses, but I've seen things from like $30 to $90 on Udemy. Um, I don't know about the more technical ones. This sounds fairly technical. Um, if we're live, it would be like 600 to $900 for a two-day course um, or a 12-hour course. But um, you could probably find out just by looking at the competition on Udemy. And then unless there's something, like if your course comes with mentoring or some other live aspect to it that they can't get from just a video, um, then you can charge more, you know, like, I don't know, like another 100 or $200. Um, and I guess another competitor is Coursera. You know. Um, Ryder, do you know anything about that kind of stuff? Yeah. That would that wouldn't be yeah, I wouldn't feel I wouldn't be advising as an expert. Yeah, I mean I would just You're kind of agree. So <laughs> yeah, like looking at um looking at my competitors and figuring out like what what the where the market's at in terms of price. Yeah. Um so yeah, sure. are there other things that the, the course you know has a, that they can't people can't get elsewhere at Udemy or YouTube or whatever? Yeah, yeah. This course is kind of new technology, and, and I give in talks, and a lot of people have liked it, and they want to learn more. And we have talked about boot camp, like a weekend workshop, but because of COVID and all that, I haven't you know? It's I don't know when that will happen, but um, uh, this course is uh, not in the it's it's there in Udemy probably by some people but not not a very high quality. Uh, Coursera doesn't have it. There is some aspect on uh, like Lynda.com. Uh, so I think the one thing like I like your idea is uh, in person like definitely like uh, or uh, uh, personal like uh, office hours or something like that. Uh, I can I can provide that would be unique and and mentoring. And with that, I'm going to have, is there one more question that, that we can have before we do a quick sort of happy hour breakout session? All right. I want to, okay, number well, one thing. Can I ask, are all the sites that you're doing, are, are they built on WordPress? Um, most of our landing pages are on Unbound. Uh, most of the websites we build are on Webflow. Although we have some on WordPress, if the client, you know, was already there and they wanted to stick on it. Uh, we have some on Squarespace. We have some on some other platforms. So that's always fun to use so many platforms. But typically, our preference, a new site will be on Webflow and a landing page would be on Unbound. Does Webflow have um, a lot of that same, is it, is it grown a lot and have like that flexibility that you'd get with WordPress where you can find the plugin to do the thing that you want to do? I would say it's less uh, plugin driven. Um, I think of Webflow kind of like Photoshop. Uh, it, it, the interface is actually pretty familiar uh, if you use a lot of Photoshop. So you have like so much control. Um, there's like, all these little dials you can adjust like with with uh, WordPress. If you don't understand code, moving something like one pixel over is not easy. It's very difficult. Um, with Webflow, it's like, okay, click the arrow key and then it moves. But then it's not so rigid like a Wix or a Squarespace that, okay, you can't uh, control that because that will break everything. Um, so it's, to me, a really nice blend. That's awesome. Okay, everyone, I want to just sort of say thank you, but please don't go yet. Wanted to give people uh, a little time to sort of get to know one another um, in all this. And uh, so before I sort of break us into breakout rooms, I would love um, to sort of just, if you wouldn't mind sharing, you know, your name, um, 
what's your quarantine drink of choice? <laughs> and what have you learned of, like um, on a tonight's session, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put us into breakout rooms. We have about five minutes um, or 10 minutes actually. And so just go for it and just, just have fun. Get to know one another. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Kavitha, I'm gonna move you. Hi. How are you doing, Adam? Hey, I ended up in a room with someone who was uh, maybe a wit, maybe stepped away and was muted oh, okay. and everything. <laughs> no worries, my friend. Let me go ahead and switch you to another one. Cool. Totally appreciate you today. Thanks for being on, like, on here with us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for doing it. Absolutely. I think I, I think you just got to join. Oh, I just click on these. Uh, okay, cool. Perfect. How are you doing, Malika? Yep. Hi, Cicely. Looks like someone moved on. I'm gonna have you join room four. Okay, thank you. Absolutely, thank you. I think you go, have to just go ahead and, and, and join and uh, you'll be all set. Uh, let me break out room. Yep. Where are you at? Oh, you're in Las Vegas or whatever. That would have been totally fun. And we could do, we could say no backgrounds. So we can actually see what people's homes and like their <laughs> stuff looks like. What does Las Vegas look like? I love all justice, my friend. So <laughs> are you yeah, sure about look, that? <laughs> if we do that, then we can do one where it's all backgrounds, right? Like, where do you want to be? <laughs> I'm well, I'm in it. Israel, so you got, you reached really far. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Did you say Israel? Israel. Wow. Yes. Yeah. I'm American, but I'm in. What time yeah. is it there, Rachel? 4.30 almost. A.M. Oh, wow. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Well, thank you. You get extra kudos. Yeah. yeah. So my, my virtual weeks already. When I don't have a virtual background, I've got five teenagers who wander back and across my <laughs> my uh, 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 background, um, sometimes in various stages of dress. So uh, it's always better to put the, ba the virtual background so that I don't have you know my eighteen year olds standing next to me in boxers going, "What's for what's for dinner, mom?" My <laughs> teenagers! Oh my gosh! So Rachel, uh, sorry. Rachel, are you running, still running on alcohol or you're already switching to coffee? Because it's I 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of I went to sleep for four hours and waited for this and put an alarm. Oh, thank you so much. Mm. That's amazing. Mm. Um, and I just wanted to sort of, you know, in closing, just sort of thank everyone for being part of this today. I think it was really great. Um, we definitely want to do more of these with you. Um, so sort of expect sort of emails from myself and Stephen, um, really sort of inviting you to sort of be part of, of the conversation, part of the planning if you want, not necessarily, but if you want to, we'd totally love to extend that to everyone. Um, and especially if you have some really great ideas about, hey, what are some of the other things that we can actually be talking about, right? Um, really do appreciate that. Uh, and lastly, we will definitely sort of have uh, more breakout sessions uh, next time. Uh, and put in a little bit more time so we can uh, sort of refill our drinks because I myself, oh, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> Can't do anything. Uh, I'm empty, uh, but 
I really do appreciate everyone today. Uh, and just since we are a small group, I actually wanted to go around and just, can you give me one word in closing? To sort of close, you know, symbolize sort of how, how you feel about today's session. I'll start. Uh, I thought that was great. Um, definitely love the breakout sessions. Good job with that, Anite. Um, and uh, Ryder, I don't know if he's still with us, but he, that was an awesome uh, presentation. Yeah, oh, actually, one more thing. Um, it's probably, Adam had a really good idea of putting your LinkedIn profile in the chat if you want other people to connect with you. I will say that uh, I've attended many, we were, we were on, I don't know how to, the word is pronounced, Frollo? For, for, for we were off at uh, vacation without pay since March 19th, and we were back at work on on uh, three weeks ago, and this was the first time I have attended an online marketing thing that intelligent people. <laughs> I will take that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I liked, uh, I liked, there's a lot of detail here, and I like that, um, you know, if you, a lot of what was shared can can be used if, if you have the time to go and, and work on it. Um, yeah, very useful. Yeah, I have to uh, agree with that. Uh, I was just wondering if this Prezo or presentation was going to be sent out uh, because Ryder did an excellent job. There's a lot of great takeaways. Um, some presentations, you know, there's, there's some hidden, you know, sales pitch uh, involved. Um, but uh, definitely, th this was great. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was pretty subtle, I guess. It's pretty subtle. Hey, I hire you. <laughs> um, Anita is recording it, so um, we'll figure out a way to put it probably on the meetup, um, you know, the comments or something. Uh, yeah, maybe, I can, uh, I can maybe a list of all the LinkedIn, LinkedIn links, too. Um, I, that's, I would have to get kind of permission from everyone, I guess, although I guess they're putting in the main area here, but yeah. it's different to put it in front of everybody on, you know, that can go to meetup. Oh, to this group, you can't do that. Uh, I guess to this group, um, all your emails are spread out across a bunch of different places, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. I'm just well, going we'll, to we'll figure that out. Yeah. I mean, feel, feel free to go ahead and, and copy, um, from the chat. I, I think everyone has permission to, to do so. Um, yeah. Want to give the other folks uh, an opportunity just to sort of chime in their sort of final words? I just, I, I loved it. It is strange as it sounds. It, it feel, it felt very uh, much uh, more intimate and warmer. And uh, you know, I mean, I it there was a nice camaraderie. Maybe it's because it was a small group and not a hundred people in a, in some, in a company's uh, conference or conference space or whatever. But uh, I really enjoyed it. And yeah, Ryder shared a lot of uh, really great, uh, great insights and, and information about landing pages. Thank you. Yeah, I think my favorite slide, uh, I guess just based on all the stuff that I do, was uh, that you laid out the tools and called it the track stack. I think that that sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, I have a last minute question on that. Does anybody use AdRoll? Does that do the same, like collect all those things together for the different pixels? Or is that old news now? Um, I know AdRoll is a display platform. Oh, it just does, does the the various collections for like, uh, but Facebook is all display, right? Um, unless AdRoll like pivoted what they offer, I think. Yeah. I recently, when I was playing around with AdRoll, it seemed like it's an audience builder sort of tool, uh, and you create ads on it. Um, okay. Cool. But yeah, it looks like they've added some tracking uh, offerings as well. To cool. Um, so you couldn't retarget a list on LinkedIn that was built by AdRoll. 
Not so, sorry to sidetrack this whole thing, but uh, I was just kind of curious. I'd heard about it for a while, and I was like, what happened to that? <laughs> but I know. Sorry. It depend on which pixel. I mean, if you place the, you couldn't use the uh, ad roll pixel to target with LinkedIn. But if you had a LinkedIn pixel, then you can retarget on LinkedIn. Right. Cool. Thanks. Cool. Uh, Steven, uh, Adrol, um, I'm friend uh, with the CTO of Adrol, and they, have, they are among the largest consumer of uh, machine learning um, uh, computer power on, uh, on the Amazon platform. So they are doing very heavy work on uh, you know, matching all the data and, and finding trends and so on. So it's kind of very interesting company. Okay. I never use it, so <laughs> I don't have experience in that. Thanks. So, so we're definitely going to wrap up soon, and we will definitely be doing this again. Something like this, we'll sort of figure it out in the next few days. Hopefully, get something out. Nudge, nudge to Stephen uh, <laughs> uh, and myself. And I just want to sort of say thank you to everyone. Closing words from anyone else, really quickly. I'm just going to give everyone a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, hey, everyone. Now, go, now we need to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs>